Apostle Alexander Nanaya Okumilabi. This man is a great man in this nation and beyond. Oh, it looks like just some six people believe it. I said this man is a great man in this nation and beyond. Apostle Alexander Nanaya Okumilabi, let me say some few things. You are, you are a book that should be read by all. An epitome of crystal clear humility, an example of true servant leadership. You are a professor in the art of leading from behind. You are a well oiled wheel that achieves great results without making noise. A small key that opens great doors we salute you today for your love and service towards the body of christ and our nation may your works never be forgotten and may the blessings of the fathers dwell upon you and your family amen as for my brother our chairman Yamiche, this is not a day this is not a day to talk about him, for he is yet in the thick of the battle, commanding the troops and making bricks for the spiritual cathedral. That day of achievement will come. That day will come. And may the Lord grant us grace to be part of that great celebration. Suffice me to say today that Chairman Yamiche is different. And it is this difference that makes all the difference. Church of Pentecost, you are blessed. I say again, Church of Pentecost, you are blessed. You know, one of the great blessings God has given you is apex leaders. You've had leaders that have taken this church through a continuous period of growth and development. You don't find that in many places. Your leaders have been different, but anyone who comes, take the button and pushes up with all the strength in them. I want you to know that God has blessed you. So know what you have and thank God for it. Then support and protect such men. For great seasons do not last forever. God bless you. My text for this morning, I've chosen it from the book of Mark, the first nine verses. And I'm reading it in the New King James Version. After two days, it was the Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And the chief priests and the scribes sought how they might take him by trickery and put him to death. But they said, not during the feast, lest there be an uproar of the people. And being in Bethany at the house of Simon the leper, he sat at a table. And a woman came having an alabaster flax of very costly oil of spikenard. Then she broke the flax and poured it on his head. That there were some who were indignant among themselves, and they said, Why this fragrant why this why was this fragrant oil wasted? For it might have been sold for more than three hundred denarii and given to the poor. And they criticized her sharply. But Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has done a good work for me. For you have the poor with you always. And whenever you wish, you may do them good. But me, you do not have always. She has done what she could. She has come beforehand to anoint my body for the burial. Assuredly, I say to you, wherever this gospel is preached in the whole world, what this woman has done will also be told 
as a memorial to her. I've titled my message, one of the statements Jesus made about this woman, she has done what she could. She has done what she could. Please bow down your head with me and let's pray. We bless your name, Father. And we thank you for this day and for the fact that your grace continues to abound. Thank you for the opportunity of your word and for the privilege of sitting under the inspiration of your spirit to listen to your word. Let your world build us up, Lord. Grant us what it takes to understand the mysteries of the kingdom that we might do your will and that your kingdom will come amongst us. We give you praise, O oh God. In Jesus' name, amen. She has done what she could. This was a statement made by Jesus. And I believe the story is clear and we all know it. Getting to the close of Jesus' ministry on earth, he was in the house of one Simon the leper, sitting at a table and a woman comes in and, and, and brings something very precious, very costly, and, and breaks it and, and pours it on his head. And we read from Mark that some people had indignation. I just want to focus on the reactions of the people in that place. The first group, they felt indignation, indignant. And indignation is a feeling or an expression of strong displeasure. Anger or annoyance at something considered as unjust, offensive, insulting, or base. So you see how these people felt about what this woman did. And they didn't just feel their indignation, but they verbalized it. They said, oh, what a waste. They went ahead to criticize her, not criticize her just ordinarily, but the Bible says they criticized her sharply. And then they mentioned what they believed that this precious ointment should have been used for, that it should have been sold and the money given to the poor. Why do you waste this on one person when many people are starving? It's common sense. And it's human logic. But sometimes that's not it. So that was the first group. There was another group. The first is some felt indignant. The second group, they were silent. So nothing was said about them. But since they said some, it means it was not all. But those who were part of the some, they didn't say anything at all. And since we don't have much time, let us be silent today on those who were silent. Let's treat them the way they treated that situation. And let me go quickly to the third group, and that is Jesus. And let us hear what Jesus said. Jesus refused to be silent. He chose to speak. You know, sometimes your silence is louder than your words. And you better speak sometimes Jesus said leave her alone she has done a good work she has done what she could and Jesus made statements to prove that this woman had foresight praise God this woman had foresight because Jesus said she had come aforehand to anoint my body for the burial. And Jesus told them that your project that you wanted to use this money for was rather short-sightedness. He said, no, you have the poor always. Me, you don't have always. This woman has done a great job. So you can see how people saw what happened and how Jesus saw it. And quickly, I just want to draw some, about six lessons out of this. Number one, do not discourage those who are doing the will of God. Do not 
discourage those who are doing the will of God. Sometimes you might not understand what they are saying. And if you are confused and you are not sure, behave like the silent group. Keep silent. Except you are sure that something is wrong, do not discourage those who are doing the will of God. And number two, since this life is full of people, who will discourage you? It means those who want to do the will of God, do not be discouraged when people criticize the good that God is doing through you. Just imagine that when this woman was pouring the oil, if she had listened to what they were saying, if she had seen what these people were saying, it could have stopped her and she could have stopped midway. Don't be discouraged. Discouragement is one of the great weapons of the enemy. Keep looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith. And number three, what people say are their opinions and their comments. Are you here with me? What people say are their opinions and their comments, but what the master says is the verdict. And it is the verdict that matters. Sometimes, if you don't take care, you listen to the crowd, you listen to the spectators at the stadium, and you will forget that it is what the referee says that matters. The referee is just one man, but it is what he says. So let us look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Let God be true, and let every man be a liar. Number four, be careful what you say when you don't know the source. You know, these days, because of social media, a lot of things come up. People come up with something and push it, they push it, and they'll tell you, share it, share it, share it. You, you don't know the source of that. Be careful what you push because you are responsible for what you share, even if you are not the originator of it. Did you hear me? I say you are responsible for what you share, even when you are not the originator of that thing. This same story is also in Matthew and in John. And if you look at the Matthew rendering in Matthew the chapter 26, you get to the verse 8. It says that it is the disciples who felt indignant. Wow. Not the ordinary people. The disciples. And then when you go to John, John 12, the verse 4, then you find out the one who mooted the idea. It was Judas Iscariot. It was Judas who said it. And the others shared it. Now, things do not arise from two heads at the same time. Most of the time, one person brings it forth. And it moves from person to person. And it was stated that Judas said it because he wanted money to steal. He had a box. So you see where the idea is coming from? And the others took it. And it was going around. And it was Jesus who did what? Who stopped it. So be careful what you share. And number five, I'm speaking to everyone here, and especially our newly elected officers who are being doctored today and those who are already in office. Do what you can. Do what you can. God knows what he has placed in you. Do what you can. Be the best you. Don't compare yourself to others. You are in no race with anyone. The only race you are in is the race between you and your best self. God is expecting you 
to do what you can. What he has placed in you, what he has enabled you to do. And when I say do what you can, it's not just it, the resources God has given you includes the people under you. How you bring those people together to achieve the great things of God. Because no man is sufficient for this task. And the sixth one, which is the last one, is finish your part. Finish your part. No matter the reaction of people, finish your God-given assignment. The enemy will do whatever he can to discourage you and to stop you. You know, not too long ago, there was a certain project that chairman led. And many people were saying so many things about that. This is a waste. This is a waste. Jesus said, she has done what she could. When you don't know what God is telling someone, when you don't know what God is moving someone to do, keep quiet. People will try to discourage you, but you know the one who has sent you. Let me re-echo the words of Jesus in John 4:34. Jesus said, my meat, my food, is to do the will of him that sent me. And not only to do it, but to finish it. To finish it. To do what? To finish it. We are here to finish. No one person can finish the work of God completely. But you finish your part and you hand over. Praise God. So in bringing this brief exhortation to a close, my brothers being doctor today, and especially Chairman Yamiche, I'm here to encourage you to do it all. Chairman, it's already evident that you are doing great. It's clear to all those who can see, but it's not everyone who sees. You know, such is life. Such is life. But like Apostle Paul, I want you to, to, to forget that which is behind. And to focus on that which is ahead. And chairman, stretch yourself. Because there are things you can do in these five years. That after these five years, you cannot do them anymore. Opportunity does not stay forever. The positions we occupy are opportunities God has given us. So, Chairman, stretch yourself. The other statement I want to make, which will be almost the last, I'll just read one scripture, is that make it irreversible. Make it irreversible. And by this, I want us to read when we go home this story in 2 Kings chapter 13, when Elisha was about to die and the king of Israel came to him and said, My father, my father, the horses of Israel, the chariots thereof. And Elisha did something for him so that he would have victory. Because in those days, Syria was on them, seriously. And cutting a long story short, Elisha told him to strike the arrows to the ground. And he struck three times and he stopped. And Elisha, who was not well, was so angry. He said, why did you stop? You should have struck a fifth and a sixth time. Chairman, strike a fifth and a sixth time. Make it irreversible. You know, there are gains you make. Generations after you can erode them. Are you here with me? Because it does not cross a certain line. But there are lines you cross that nothing can erode. I pray that God will cast the Ebenezer stone that thus far has the Lord helped us it also means we are going back we are going forward we are going forward make it irreversible may the Lord be your helper may the almighty be with you for all you can do is to do your part and trust God for the rest she has done 
what you could do what you can shall we pray shall we pray